This is Ari. The unfortunate cat girl tasked with the impossible goal of fully completing Final Fantasy XIV. Over the next several thousands of hours, I will collect every single achievement, complete every new raid, and min-max every piece of content that the game throws at me. Can I create the strongest account ever? So as you could probably guess, I am going to be very busy. But first and foremost, let's break down the types of achievements within the game. Grinding achievements is doing the same activity over and over again. Skill-based or logistic-based achievements will test your knowledge as well as your mechanics, while also requiring you to find other people who also have to be at the same level of play. And finally, time-gated achievements shows just how sadistic some of these developers can be. Did you know that there's achievements in this game that are time-gated by over seven years? Is it one of the hardest raids in the game? Is it housing? Is it soloing a deep dungeon? No. They're leave quests. An outdated system added in ARR. The leave quest achievements are just one of many sadistic achievements that Square has added into Final Fantasy XIV. And it's important that we set a foundation to make sure that we're always working towards them while we're doing our more short-term goals. So first I want to go ahead and lay out which big accomplishments we've already managed to do, as well as pinpoint the ones that I will permanently be working on and steadily be updating you on them. First, we'll talk about raiding. Both Ultimates of Endwalker I was able to complete on patch, as well as all three raid tiers being completed week one. We'll need to make sure that in the future we continue that trend. Next is probably the most unconventional thing you may have heard of when it comes to achievements. Completing 2000 Mentor Roulettes will award you with both an achievement as well as the Astro Mount. It's fairly rare, and I already have it completed, but we have a unique goal with this account where I am not doing just 2000 Mentor Roulettes, but 2000 Mentor Roulettes on every single North American data center. Currently, we've already done our 2k on Aether, and we're about 1.2k into Crystal. This will be a long-term goal that we continue to work on. My rarest achievement, as well as the one that was the most annoying, is called Luckiest of Ladies. It's the third most rare achievement in the game, and requires you to solo about 2,000 gazelle skin maps. Doing so will get you 250 thief maps, roughly. Once you have 250 thief maps, you can then run group runs for another 2,000 thief maps. So roughly about 4,000 treasure map runs and you will have yourself the luckiest of ladies title. Again, I will make a YouTube video explaining this in depth as well as my experience, but it's good to have this crossed off. Another good one to have off of my list is soloing all three deep dungeons. A lot of people get hung up on this because there's a pretty stark learning curve learning how to solo deep dungeons, but luckily I enjoy it quite a bit, so we got that one done just by that being one of my preferred pieces of content. Another really great project that we already finished is the Big Fish and Final Fish grinds, which is catching all of the big fish across Eorzea, which were pretty difficult from a logistics standpoint, as many of the really tough fish had strange windows, like 5 in the morning, and then they would leave for a week. So this is a pretty good one to get done, and I'm glad that I don't have to stress about it anymore. And going forward, I plan on doing the big fish each patch as they come out. Because this time, I had, you know, five expansions worth of fish to do all in one go. So it was a pretty big grind, but now that I'm caught up, I reckon this one will be a lot more manageable in the future. So that about covers a lot of the long-term things that I already have done. Now let's talk about the biggest long-term grinds that we are still working on. 
The biggest culprit, of course, is leave quests. Leave quests have several different chapters, some of them being for your crafters, some of them for gatherers, your battle jobs, your grand companies. They are just one big time-gated mess. You can hold up to 100 allowances and you obtain six allowances a day, meaning you need to stay on top of this over the course of a couple weeks or you're going to start overcapping. I made the mistake of overcapping my leaves for over three years, which means during those three years, I was not progressing this achievement at all. If you're thinking about being an achievement hunter, this is the number one suggestion that I have. Get this done. Keep them rolling at all times. The next doozy is Frontline Wins. Frontline is one of the PvP modes within Final Fantasy XIV. Matches tend to last from anywhere from 9 to 14 minutes, usually, and I need to win 3,000 matches. Plus side, I love PvP. I have a good time doing it. My win rate is decent, but 3,000 wins means this will take easily one to two years and several hours. Since the time gate is smaller than the leave quests, I'm not as pressured to rush this, so we can chip away at it over time. Right behind Frontline Wins is Crystalline Conflict Wins, which is a whopping 5,000. I also have to make sure I roll swap, as I need 1,000 wins on healer, 1,000 on melee, 1,000 on fizz, 1,000 on caster, and 1,000 on tank. Like I said, I do enjoy PvP, and these matches also go a lot quicker, so this will probably be a little bit easier than the Frontline, and it also pops 24 hours a day in the casual queue, whereas Frontline is a little more logistics based and stops queuing around 4 in the morning. Those three are the primary long-term projects that we're going to have to keep chipping away at, but there's also a few mid-term projects that I've got on my list, and uh, that would be Diadem, which is about three to 400 hours of grind waiting for me. We have all of the Eureka as well as Boja weapons, in addition to the 10 clears of DRS and Baldessian Arsenal. Those shouldn't take too long compared to the mega grinds that I've talked about, but they'll be nice little arcs or projects that we can work on for a few weeks or a month at a time. With all the foundational aspects covered, let's delve into the more personalized and essential details for the journey. This roadmap will be our guide. Yellow represents the grinds, green the skill, and orange are the time gates. Here you'll be able to see my progress as I'm making it, and have an idea of where I'm going to be headed next in terms of which achievements I'll be tackling. Currently my main focus has been in Eureka. Hello, hello. We are currently in the first zone of Eureka, and... It's actually the Gale's weather right now, which is what we need to get a Pazuzu kill, but that's not what we're doing. <clears throat> uh, over here, I will show you guys the process of us creating our weapons. We have to talk to this guy, and he is going to upgrade each and every single weapon from its first step. Um, we've already started a White Mage Relic. Oh, that is a Pazuzu spawn. Can I make it in time? Hold on. We have to immediately shout for an invite. And we are just going to pretend that we helped prep that. What a, what, what a coincidence. I did not expect this to pop. I mean, I saw the weather, but uh, I guess we will get back to our weapon making in just a moment. Okay. Got him done. We can finally go back to making our weapon. Got an altar, whatever that's worth. I guess I need a card from here. So the one NM that gave me the special glam is not up yet, so we have a little bit of time to burn. I figured we'd do one of the ones that was in the area. It's still pretty high level, so we'll get a good amount of currency from it. And it's in a bit safer of an area too, so I can AFK a bit more and chill until my Scorpion Harness Fate spawns. All right, cool. So this one did end up spawning about three minutes before the um, NM that I wanted to do for that glam. 
So we're gonna quickly blow this up and then I'm gonna make my way over and see if Sir Ketz will finally give me the chest piece. All right, moment of truth has come. I've already done this one about four times. No, three times. So this would be attempt number four. I've never recorded before while fighting this, so maybe that'll give some kind of placebo look. And if not, we will be seeing this scorpion many, many times because I refuse to stop doing this until I get my chest piece. So here we go. Kill number four. What do we get? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Alright, well, we'll be back fighting this guy pretty much every single week until I have my drop. So I will see you guys when it happens again. All right, it's nighttime in game, which means we are back over in the Pazuzu area. Um, we're actually doing a strat that I quite like, where um, even though you need to kill these wraiths in order to get Pazuzu to spawn, we've been making sure to also be killing these elephants because of the sheer amount of uh, crystals that they drop. I'll show up my chat log really quick here. You can see what I'm talking about. Um, these big drops of like 13 and 14 crystals, those are coming specifically from the elephants. Um, and it gets even higher when your chain is increased, so pretty nice little way to double dip and work on the crystal part of our relic, even though we're popping the Pazuzu Fate. And we're basically just going to be running back and forth between the A, B, and C marker here until he eventually spawns. Alright, so we've been grinding for about five or six minutes, and he actually spawned pretty quick, so we already have our Pazuzu fate. Alright, so this will be the first Pazuzu kill of the day. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get another one, but we really, really need the currency that he gives to build our relic weapons, and then we can move on to the next map with our next weapon. I think he gives three feathers. Let's see, what does he got from it? Maybe a triple triad card? No card, but we got three feathers. Um, we'll need a lot more of these and uh, we can go on and build our next weapon. Okay, <clears throat> so we're back in the Animos crafting area. I've already um, spent 1,300 Animos crystals off recording to get my white mage weapon to the final stage of this map. All we've got to do now is turn in some of those feathers that we farmed, and then we are good to move on to Pagos. So we need 1,300 of these Protean crystals from this map in order to get to this stage. But once we're all done with that, we just give them our feathers, quick cutscene, and we get our first achievement for White Mage. So we'll have to make sure that we move over to um, Pagos now. And over in Pagos, we're still going to be at the first step, so we'll have to do all the crystals, but we should have enough for everything. Currently on the Pagos boss, much like Pazuzu as well as Penny, which we took care of earlier, this one is going to give us two trophy items that we can use to upgrade our relic weapon. We'll have to kill him a whole bunch over the course of our journey, and sadly he doesn't have any like mega rare item that's worth a ton, but he's just something that we're going to consistently have to deal with over and over again, so good one to do for the day. There's our two Louis Ice. Very nice. Another big NM money fate. 20 mil drop. Maybe? Not today. So Pagos is a bit frustrating because there's a couple different things we're going to have to keep track of. Um, the first being the Pagos Crystals, which you just get from completing NMs as normal. Um, the Louis Ice can be obtained from fighting the map's boss. You'll get two per clear, which, you know, sounds bad because you have to do so many of them. But the real problem of this map is the Frosted Protean Crystals. Um, that requires us to fill up our kettle, which is in the top right of my screen, circling with my mouse. We have to fill up that kettle a total of 31 times her weapon and um, generally from my um, experience on this zone is 
the amount of frosted crystals that I need is drastically outpacing um, the other currencies. So like my Louis Ices, they're chilling. My, my normal crystals, they're chilling. These frosted crystals are really bleeding my pockets. So at some point we'll have to do a pretty dedicated farm and uh, get those all done. So as you can see, first step here takes out 500 of our crystals, feels pretty rough, and uh, 10 more of the frosted. We've already turned in five of the frosted, so that puts us at 15. And then this final upgrade is the one that stings. It's gonna take 16 frosted crystals here and our Louis ice. So as you can see, only 500 crystals from the normal currency, but that's nothing. That's, that's really not too bad. It's those frosted ones that are the problem. So if we look in my inventory, I've now got um, just shy of a thousand Pagos crystals, which is two weapons worth. And that completely cleaned out my frosted crystals. Louis Ice, I still have two weapons worth, two weapons worth here, and zero weapons worth frosted. So that's kind of the predicament we'll be worrying about, but another weapon complete. So that's it for this week. Next time we'll be working more on Eureka as well as some of my subsidiary goals. Creating the most powerful account has been something that I've thought about for many years. But with how you guys have been supporting me and how my stream has evolved over the last couple of years, I finally found that motivation to get this series moving and take you guys along with me for the ride. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. We also stream full time over at twitch.tv slash Effect, and we'll be completing some of the achievement stuff on stream. So if you'd like to take a look over there, um, links will be in the description and I hope to see you on the next one. Have a good day and bye-bye for now.